Hi, Chaba here from Game of Conversions and I'm back with another proven sales letter breakdown that I'm doing for 90 days. And today we're going to look at another very mega popular sales letter written by none other than John Caples, one of the founding fathers of direct response copywriting. And this one's the famous, they laughed when I sat down at the piano uh, sales letter, uh, which actually has been copied many, many, many times after it. Uh, and sometimes, you know, in good ways, but usually in bad ways, like uh, taken totally out of context. But today we're going to look at the OG original that uh, actually started this type of headline. And this is, by the way, one of the most famous headlines ever in the history of copywriting. And the headline goes like this. They laughed when I sat down at the piano, but when I started to play. So immediately we have many, many th things going for it. And I don't know why, but for this one, this specific uh, uh, analysis, maybe it gets, it's because of a, an image file or something, but I, uh, when I zoom in, the comments disappear for some reason, but it's way too small to read like this. So I'm gonna like switch between zooming in and zooming out. But basically uh, we immediately start with uh, a picture so this picture just shows us the context of the whole thing. It's an in medias res thing, which means that it starts right there in the middle, middle of the action. And, uh, you know, we have a little uh, pre-head part, which basically says, can he really play? A girl whispered, heavens no, Arthur uh, exclaimed. He never played the note in his life. So this immediately like brings on a major mass fear that people who are interested in playing music music have and the fear is that you know when they uh sit down to play something in front of others they're going to get humiliated people are going to look down on them so this is definitely not a good feeling and the copywriter obviously knew this and he wanted to like make this uh immediately apparent and take note that this was written in 1927 so almost it's like uh, a 93 year old 94 year old uh, ad think about it it's pff, blows the mind but if you read it and i actually encourage you to hand copy this because it's totally relevant like if if it weren't so copied uh, for today that much uh, you could still make it work nowadays if you modify the headline it's just it's a persuasive sales argument that's it so let's just look at the headline itself what happens here so they laughed when I sat down at the piano, but when I started to play. So the first thing is they. Who are they? Well, I think it foreshadows like an us versus them type of thing because the target audience, you know, thinks of other critical people, you know, uh, especially in those times, it was the high society. Like not many people played piano, uh, played piano, but those who did probably lived in a more, more of an aristocratic type of society. And, you know, they who are more critical, I think it refers to those people left, which is like the mass fear of people. And if you remember my Eugene Schwartz video, he was the one who came up with the idea of of trying to, uh, whenever writing any type of sales message, trying to appeal to people's mass desires or mass fears, you know, there's no need to reinvent the wheel here, just, you know, appeal to something that's already there. Uh, when this specific word gives context, and the reason why I'm analyzing uh, unique words is because they all, you know, earn their place in the headline, they're each extremely important. So they and left and when everything, everything is super important. So sat down at the piano. This is kind of like the uh, moment of, of dread. So a lot of people actually fear this. They dread this, especially the target audience that we are focusing on. Probably people who are interested in music or maybe they play a little bit, but they're like far from being confident enough to like sit down at a piano and play something. Not at all. So this is a big moment of problem for, for people. And then we have the second part of the headline, which is, but when I started to play. And this but basically just foreshadows a twist that it's something is going to happen. And this type of story structure structure is apparent for the, for the entire promotion itself. So we basically have a cool little story for most of this ad, as good promotions usually have. And then we have the big cliffhanger at the end. So when I started to play, like the reader is going like, so what happened? Let me know. Like, I want to know. I want to find out. Well, the only way to find out is for you to basically uh, read the ad. That's it. 
So basically, uh, we have very, very good storytelling here. And what happens is that uh, this part immediately foreshadows the whole action because this first part just goes into a little bit of detail into how someone came in who was an expert at piano they came in be uh, before our protagonist and basically they crushed it they nailed it they you know played uh the rosary and uh, everybody was you know super satisfied and everybody was impressed and then you know this again is something that's really problematic for a target audience because somebody else has already set the standards so high be, be, uh, before them and they, they can't even play well. So like this this isn't looking so so good. So uh, the copywriter again knew this and he wanted to pay uh, to like describe this a little bit to like agitate the pain a little bit. We also have quotes like this whole part, uh, the pre-head part, which happens here in the top is um, like repeated here once more. Uh, this just basically twists a knife more and it also adds credibility. Whenever you have quotes, it just seems more natural. It just seems more credible. Uh, and then uh, we have a part that builds tension and tension is very, very important to copywriting. So from, from here on out, from like the, the third or fourth paragraph, uh, we uh, enter the, the point of view of the protagonist of this little story. So basically this guy here up who's like just there trying to sit down on the piano and some people are whispering and I, I gotta give credit to the artist here who drew this picture because it's so awesome like it captures the um, the atmosphere of like sitting down and the pressure is high and then people are having a good time but they're like look at this clown I mean he's he's not gonna do anything like can he play? Nah, come on. So they're hypercritical, but uh, this part here actually uh, explains how, you know, for some reason, our main protagonist was confident. He didn't have a problem and, and everybody was like laughing at him, uh, thinking that he had false confidence, but apparently not. And, you know, this part really just dimensionalizes everything. And then we get to the story part. Then I started to play. This is the big moment that has arrived. OK, and this first paragraph here is just it. The instant wow factor factor happens. And this is the pain, the dream situation for our target audience by, you know, starting to play and immediately hooking the the, the listening audience with it. So it goes like this. I just want to read this to you. Uh, instantly, a tense silence fell on the guests. The laughter died on their lips, lips as if by magic. I played through the first bars of Liszt's immortal Liebestraume. Uh, I heard gasps of amazement. My friends sat breathless spellbound so very powerful words very visual words uh describing how you know this guy our protagonist basically played a probably a very hard uh piece because list ferenc uh, he was actually a hungarian composer just like me uh, i mean I'm not, I'm not a composer but i'm also hungarian but uh it's probably uh something that's complex and it symbolizes you know high culture and and mastery in this type of thing and then everybody's jaws basically just drop to the floor uh not understanding like what the hell just happened okay so uh yeah it's really really powerful and um the next part that happens here is like uh, this paints the dream so this again describes like what happened and how wonderful everything like this is because our target audience you know they are afraid as well to be in these situations and by reading this story they're like wow like is it possible for someone who isn't even like a, a long time piano player to like have this sort of effect what like i want in in that so like what, what's happening here and then you know we have a subhead which is like a complete triumph so to me this just this just means from the uh protagonist perspective is just something like f you i did it so uh just just better believe it that i'm good so everybody was doubting them and then he proved them wrong this is like a, a, a typical story archetype that a lot of people uh are moved by okay everybody wants to like see the underdog win it's like a, a david versus goliath story um more pain the dream parts here and uh, uh then we go from like the little mini story inside the story of how 
basically our protagonist went from zero to like being a piano hero so uh, basically this is kind of a uh, a dialogue that happens between the guests and him and again by adding these dialogue elements by adding quotes and like specific uh, sentences spoken by people even though maybe it didn't happen uh, like the copywriter has achieved has, has, has given credibility to the whole promotion to the whole thing okay so uh, readers who read this they'll be like wow this makes sense and like like obviously I, I do understand this and then we have another subhead and I see how like easy it is to like uh, uh, go through this message because then you have a bunch of sun subheads like you have the headline then you have then I started to play a complete triumph how I learned to play without a teacher play any instrument send our free so it's like the subheads themselves are a mini story and think about it John Caples came up with this like 90 plus years ago 90 plus years ago uh, so that's why we still have plenty of things to learn from these old copywriting masters because they knew like what 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 worked and what not didn't and to this day human psychology didn't change like it's, it never changes like tactics change uh, some type of habits change but the fundamental laws of human psychology don't change at all so um, then we have the how I learned to play without a teacher and this basically describes the unique mechanism of the product itself so we had the story we had the uh, the whole tension part we had like a little mini story of a conversation of like what happened here and then John Capos goes into more of a uh, of, of explaining how the unique mechanism really works here and uh, uh, you know we have another mini story of basically trying the product so basically our protagonist just says like hey I, I I saw this ad for a program I tried it and it was like amazing so uh, for only a few cents a day which in itself is quite a good value proposition because it seeds an irresistible offer uh, so just like that you know I was able to like become a, a a very good piano player in no time and this is basically just a case study a testimonial type of case study then we have another testimonial here conveniently placed under the headline itself so that if some people are just scrolling uh, they're scrolling with their eyes you know and they, they're not reading the same the whole thing they can still you know uh, see this testimonial and they're like oh okay so this is immediate proof then we have some qualification elements to like play any instrument. So this doesn't only work if you play the piano, this works uh, for basically everyone. And it's a big promise, but there, like it's no wonder why we have a big proof element above it because you always have to uh, follow up your promises with proof and they go hand in hand together. And many people forget this, but like if you have some proof, then you can make an interesting promise and people will be much more likely to uh, believe it and then this paragraph goes like deals with objection handling like you know even if you have no talent so probably John Capels when doing research for this and most copywriters definitely do tons of research before writing anything discovered that some people they have this weird imposter syndrome in their mind or they have something that tells them that you know I, I can't play the piano like I don't have any talent so that's what they think and um, he just wanted to basically counter it okay and we also have like uh, the first sentence of this is, is really really good I'm just gonna read it to you because I think it's really powerful and think about it it's 90 plus years old so play any instrument you too can now teach yourself to be an accomplished musician right at home in half the usual time so how powerful is that like you can teach yourself because up until that point if you wanted to learn music then you had to go basically to a uh, like a piano teacher but now you can teach yourself with this book for example or this this cool new method and that's the whole unique mechanism that has been foreshadowed and um, we have at the end of this paragraph we have some more qualification and the unique selling proposition once again so that this whole thing seems unique like nothing ever comes close to it at least in those times and then we have like the final subhead which kind of introduces our irresistible offer it's like sent for our free booklet uh, and demonstration lesson so 
it's it's really it really is an irresistible offer because it's free so you know there's this story that builds um tension in people it gets resolved it paints the dream it seems credible it introduces a unique new new opportunity for you to teach yourself to uh to become a great piano player and then it's even free like what the hell man i mean if i'm in the target audience why wouldn't i try it and uh it uh, basically also foreshadows a little special report that comes with it, a test on which you can basically score yourself on how good you are or not. And people love tests, even today, but even in those days, they love tests because it, um, it makes them, it pulls them into the whole process itself. And uh, people just usually love this. So uh, I think it's really, really powerful. And then we have some scarcity as well by saying that, you know, uh, we only have like limited kits available, so you should definitely check out this offer right now. And then we have a call to action, and we have like uh, an order form here, and, and we still have a little bit of scarcity, like a little bit of scarcity and a little bit of like restating how good of an offer this is. So yeah, uh, I mean, sorry for <laughs> constantly uh, switching the, the font sizes here, but uh, for some reason, I don't know, it doesn't show comments right now. And I wanted to also like show you what I think about these specific elements to go through the whole ad like this, but uh, it's, it's still really powerful. And it's no wonder why this headline became so famous and so well known. Now, I don't know exactly how much this ad sold in total or something. I don't have this info right now, but safe to say it was pretty successful. And it's one of those classic copywriting examples that you'll see anywhere when you type in like best copywriting examples of all time, probably this is going to be in top 10. And I'm not like, nobody can tell whether it was the best or not, like in top 10 or not, because later on we have like even better copywriting samples, let's say copywriting uh, examples. But uh, for that time, before all these courses and lessons and the internet and like having the the science of copywriting even like developed for someone to write something like this that was that was really something special and it's no no wonder why you should definitely study the olds like uh, like john capels okay or claude hopkins or robert collier or these people so uh yeah i hope you enjoyed this this uh, is definitely a great example of uh, how kick-ass copywriting actually works it's not for everybody that's for sure like if you made it until this point in the video it means you're hardcore because you're not easily distracted and if you made it until this point then i'd appreciate it if you left a like uh, under this video also a comment with like your number one takeaway that connected with with you the most like what's the number one thing that you learned from this and then um, also share this with others if you think that they would also find this helpful because I'm doing these videos daily and uh, I want it to reach as many people as possible. So thank you so much for watching. I'm gonna see you in the next one.